Good afternoon YouTube, my name is Brandon and today we're going to be replacing the brushes and probably trying to fix the commutator on my 12 inch DeWalt cutoff saw. It's a DeWalt DW705, I've had it for oh, probably close to 15 years, haven't really haven't done a thing to it, haven't even had to replace the brushes, but it's been acting up for a while and it's one of those things that I've put off and put off. I've had a catastrophic failure. The brushes are completely destroyed on one side of it. Hopefully it didn't take out the commutator in the in the process. The commutator through the inspection hole looks like it's pretty shot. What I'm going to try to do is uh, turn the commutator on a drill with some thousand grit sandpaper hopefully that'll make it come out of it and I have some new brushes on the way let me bring you in and show you what's uh, happened and I'm crossing my fingers that I haven't uh, destroyed this saw all right so pretty straightforward um, I've removed the end cap and you've got two brushes one here one on the opposing side just pull these pull that off that's gonna be you know in there with a screwdriver and pull your brush out I've already done the other side. So you can see this brush is about half its normal length. Um, and it's got some pitting on the carbon surface, which indicates that the commutators probably got a similar situation going on. But this is the culprit right here. Um, look how short that brush is. Uh, completely gone is the... Is the little wire uh, don't know where that went that's the saw somehow ate that up um, this used to be attached to there and then it had that little metal metal disc on the back side the metal disc was in there but the wire has gone and look at the brush it's completely completely ruined cross our fingers let's get uh, let's get working on this thing see if we can get it fixed Yeah, just what I suspected, that commutator looks smoked. So it looks like we're going to probably have to have to take that out. You can see how it's all black. Looks like it's pitted and the brushes indicated the same. So let's get trying to get that out. So it's a few days later and we have the brushes let's open them up and see if we can get this thing working oh yeah look at that 
Looks like they may have a little bit more spring pressure too because this spring is a little bit longer. So look at the dis difference in length, how much those brushes have worn down. And that, look at that one. <laughs> yeah, it was due. Let's get them in. All right, so I did have to do a little bit of fiddling around with these brushes. And you see this little stem piece right here that attaches this wire to this, to this base. Well, I actually had to like fold this down in here for whatever reason it it just it's too tight and it's binding within the saw so I'm gonna do this on camera you know these th these are the things that that happen at times when you buy something that is not necessarily a factory um, part from the dealer and these weren't these are aftermarket these are aftermarket brushes that I got on on eBay so but they're gonna work just fine so I'm just gonna kind of fold that down like that and I'm gonna fold this down in front of it just like an accordion and then it'll come right together there. Alright, so the idea here is to seat the commutator, uh, seat the brush tighter to the commutator. And the way we're going to do that is now that we've run it in one direction, so you can see how the brush, this starting to wear in a little bit, but I'm going to help it along. So. I'm going to put a little mark on the brush so that I make this side up. This side will always be up when I put it back into the tool. And now I'm going to try to thread a piece of thousand grit sandpaper on top of the commutator. You know, again, this isn't going to be something that you're going to read in the manual. I'm, if I had bought original factory parts, I probably wouldn't have to do any of this. But I'm cheap. And sometimes this is what happens when, when you do things the cheap way. Okay, so I've threaded this piece of sandpaper through. It's riding against the commutator. Now I'm going to take my brush, inserting it top, side up, tuck it in there, put my cap back on. Okay, now I'm going to pull this sandpaper through the brush. There, and that should that should help. That should seat that against the commutator. That will that will sand that brush down to match the profile of the commutator. All right, let's try it again. That's yeah, better. Better than it was. I might try it uh, one more time. See if we can get it a little bit better. All right, so look at that brush now. You can see how it's starting to build the profile across the whole face. And that's why that brush is sparking, because the commutator is not touching the entire profile of this brush. So by me sanding that, that is beveling. That's beveling this commutate this brush to the exact profile of the commutator. So uh, I'm going to run that through a couple more times, get this wear pattern to look a little bit better. Yeah, it'll it wear in on its own, but um, the reason that uh, that arcing you don't want that arcing against that commutator. This thing's been arcing for for quite a while, which is one of the reasons why I'm having to do the work that I've had to do up to this point. So I'm going to get this profiled a little bit better to the commutator. We'll start it up and we'll, 
we'll see how uh, we see how well we can get it to run. All right, that did the trick. So let's get this thing buttoned up so we can try it out. See how it's gonna work. All right, it's all back together, and this thing has so much more torque than it's had in the past. Uh, I wish I would have just done this earlier, not dubbed around with those bad brushes. And that's all there is to it. So I didn't say in the beginning, but this needs to be unplugged the whole time you're doing this. And as an added thing, uh, those brushes, I don't know why they didn't fit why I had to mess with them but um, you know that's the issues that you're going to have sometimes when you buy parts that aren't made by the actual manufacturer they were replacement brushes specifically for this saw uh, but why they didn't fit I don't know so um, that's why you should never throw away your old parts if you have them until you get your new parts so you can line them up match them up and see where the difference is when I matched up those two the difference was is in that little prong um, Typically, you would probably never have to sand your brushes or do any of that nonsense that I did with the commutator. Uh, but the commutator, I think, for this saw is like $140. So, um, you know, I had nothing to lose. I don't, I no longer use this saw as part of my living. So this is now a hobby saw. So to me, it was worthwhile as being a hobby saw that I could try to save it if possible. So I can, you know, I can afford to, try to dub it together like I did by seating the brushes and bending the little prong and uh, sanding down the commutator. Those are all little things that, you know, if you have a home workshop and you can deal with fixing those things, you can go ahead and do it. But if this is how you make your living, you'd probably want to buy genuine parts, buy a brand new commutator, you know, whatever. Time is money, I guess. So with that being said, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. And this technique kind of pretty much works for most all tools that have brushes. Just make sure you order the right brushes, compare them to the parts that you have, and call it a day. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And try to be easy on me for my little backyard hack with all my sandpaper butchery. Thanks. See ya.